Okay, so we have part B, which is flat, part A, which is flat, and both of these two parts meet up so that we can get a nice, perfect, flat, square, 90 degree surface to where they join. Okay, and that allows us to add a secondary component to the top because we're gonna embed a band ring into our master mold. So the trick here is you wanna start and line up your cuddle bone, right? On the very top. Okay, like so. So that a little bit of metal is coming out, right? And that allows the metal being cast in place to flow through the top perimeter and then into part C, your top of your mold, or in the cast version, the bottom of your mold, so that you can attach some component beyond just a band ring element. Now, if you just want to cast a band ring, you totally can, no issue there. But the trick is, when you do that, you just need to know that when you trim off your sprue or your button, there's going to be a section where there's no cuttlefish. So if you want like one continuous cuttlefishy thing, uh, just know that the, the interior of your band will be smooth because you're always trimming off the button and the exterior of your band can have some other cuttlefish element attached. So what I'm doing is I'm just gently pressing in the ring mold and then I'm registering from the front face so that they're perfectly aligned and I'm just gently pressing the ring into place. And so what's gonna happen is a compression of both parts while I wiggle back and forth to make sure they're registered, like so. And then I will stop, dust it out with a brush, and then remove, or sorry, stop, remove the ring, dust it out with a brush, and repeat. But we're gonna go to time lapse for that because you don't need to see it 100 times. Okay, so once you have your band ring embedded in the cuttlefish, you want to make sure that you listen for the signature rubbing. Okay, that's what ensures you have a nice gasket, like an airtight seal between the cuttlefish back and front. So A and B are sealed tightly. Your band ring is fully encapsulated. And then you can see on the very top there's a section of the band ring coming out and that's allowing metal to flow to part C of the cast part, but it's also making sure that the registration is flush. Now, on the off chance that you didn't do this perfectly the first try, it's okay to open up the mold, remove the ring, and then go back and sand parts A and B till they're square. Okay. In this case, it's working out fine, so we're not worried about it. But I would like to point out that we do have a defect right here where some of the cuttlefish broke out during the compression process, okay? And so there's one thing you wanna make sure of when you're getting your band ring out. You wanna make sure that you clean everything out. You're brushing out the parts. But before you do any of that, you're gonna take the time to file in your registration marks so that you know that part A and part B register in one way. And that's why you keep your master part inside the mold before you pull out your file and mark these indicators, okay? So I'm holding everything so that everything is perfectly flush and we're registered with our band ring and that's not gonna move. Okay, so we've got nice deep grooves. Don't go too shallow because you may find that the keratin breaks away and you lose your registration. Now always file in four points. And I make sure to file it into 
the keratin, okay? If you haven't made it to the keratin, you're gonna have to keep going, okay? This stuff tends to flake off the, the light yellow bits, so you wanna mark into the actual hard part of the bone, so when you wire this frame up, everything is exactly as you had it aligned originally, okay? Just make sure everything's lined up. Right, you got that groove in there, you got this groove in here. Get that back in focus, okay? And then file your fourth groove. So once you have your registration marks in, you can get away with taking the whole thing apart knowing that you're still going to have the alignment you need and you can remove your master part ever so gently and then take your brush and bring out that cuttlefish texture that you're going to want to keep. Now if you're going for something without cuttlefish texture, leave the powder compressed in the mold so it doesn't look like it was cuttlefish cast. But if you want to keep that texture, that signature identifier that this was done, with cuttlefish bone. It's always good to take the time to brush it out once and then again before you put together the final part. Okay, But that's part A and part B as they go together to hold the mold. Okay, So now we can work on part C.